it's very, 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 very uncommon for us to go down to these depths in low elo legends. But right here in the red, we have a 300 elo player who forgot to make villagers. Please make villagers. Please make villagers. Oh, actually, there's villagers and blue didn't do any either yet. So we're fair. Um, we have Nantic, the 300 elo player playing as the Vietnamese in the red. An online duel uh, against... Chifurin Fula. <laughs> Does that mean something? Maybe someone can translate. I uh, I have no clue. But Chifu is actually 430 ELO. So there's a 130 ELO gap here. However, I thought about it, and I was just thinking that that's that really means very little at this ELO. I feel like with the amount of mistakes that are made or just the amount of different styles players have, the only thing that we might see Blue do a slightly better job at might be producing villagers, which is the key thing in Age of Empires. But already, Blue has had kind of a slower start. So I have noticed that Blue started off the game with four houses. Standard build orders normally uh, will have you start off with two. So Red seems to have a little more experience there. And the scouts are on the move. And we have a very open map with Arabia. And the devs made it extremely open to the point where I think a lot of people who loved Arabia before, chat, tell me if you're with me, actually have been considering maybe not playing Arabia as frequently because it's uh, it's crazy. And I think for 300 ELO players or even average players, maybe they have been affected as well. I don't even know if 300 ELO players wall much. Do you guys remember that YouTube upload with Tootins against Kumins? Remember the one guy wouldn't mine gold? And then the other guy just sat at home with his Teutonic Knights and his Rams? <laughs> um, in that game, I don't think there were any walls. There were like house walls, right? But it was just to look pretty. It wasn't meant to really block any armies from coming out. Oh, yes, the classic. The straggler trees and the mills. Well, as I've always said about straggler trees, listen, if you want to chop these trees and go for the mill first, have at it. Just please don't chop these trees before making a lumber camp on a wood line. I need to see a little bit more efficiency. The first two trees are kind of fine. So, there's a lot of people, and I'm realizing this recently. Oh, that mill. Oh, I think that's because it's good for farming and also good for the berries. But that's not so good for my soul. Okay. Well, we've got some long distance forging here for Blue. Who is the higher rated player, by the way? Um, but anyways, as I was going to say, a red has shown up here. Hold on. What's red going to do? Red sees the enemy. 300 elo. What's your logic? You are Vietnamese. So you know where the enemy TC is. Also, red is scouting with sheep in the north. That's funny. Okay, I don't think we're going to see any funky business. I really wanted to see the 300 ELO player try and steal the boar. <laughs> um, wait a second. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. Maybe trying to bait the opponent into ringing the town bell? Really getting some good scouting in on the opponent's town. Found the berries, found the houses. Maybe Red's trying to learn from the Berber culture. And pretty soon the Vietnamese will start lining up houses. Oh, nice farm. Okay. Anyways, can I get my thought out? I'm sorry. There's a few people out there. I don't know how many, but they are dedicated to the low elo legend playlist. Like, I got a few comments on a YouTube video the other day that they were stalking the YouTube playlist and they saw that there was a video there that didn't go public yet. Because apparently the playlist will say there's a video that hasn't gone public yet if it's been put into the playlist. Did you know due to COVID-19, <coughs> Germany is running out of sausages and cheese? Oh my the god. considers this to be the worst case scenario. <laughs> oh, the worst case scenario. That's great. Hey, we have a diagonal house line for red. So they kind of... Oh, this is classic! This is classic. You steal culture from an enemy village, but then you just put your own spin on it. So you don't want to do the same line because then they'll be like, "No, that's that's Berberism." Like we want our own name for it. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go for this. We'll go for the diagonal houses. Perfect. 
Yes, there's a word for that. Someone in chat said it, but I want to finish my story. So anyways, as Blue is now made a lumber camp, but refuses to chop the trees next to the lumber camp, because that's logical. People just sit there looking at the low evil legend playlist and they just wait for the videos. And if I put videos in there, but I don't make them public, I'll upload something else and people will comment and say, yo, give me that video. I'm waiting for it. Come on, T90. You know, I initially thought that having low evil legends be popular would be good for the future of my content and my future. But long like long term, low elo legends might be so addicting for some people that they can't watch any other of my videos. So I'm killing my channel with this. What have I done? What have I done? Also, blue's in feudal age. I didn't even realize blue was on the way up. And now blue, who has 13 pop, is gonna go chop trees next to the wood line. Very simple layout for blue currently. Now, my advice is do not go to the next age unless you're going to get a benefit from the next age. So that could be military, for example. Not seeing any military buildings. Or it could be eco upgrades. So I suppose blue could get the wood upgrade. But I really don't think that blue has that in mind. So that's something that's good to know. Red has these beautiful little farms next to the mill. And this is true low elo legends. Like, these people probably don't watch videos. They probably don't watch streams. They probably don't have a ton of experience beyond playing when they were growing up. And when I was growing up, I did not farm around the town center. I always farmed around the mill because it just made sense to me. Now I know that, you know, it's probably a problem for the villagers if they get attacked and not be close to the town. Still a scouting sheep, by the way. Ha... And now we have a villager here. What? Can we talk about the fact that this person is farming around the mill and baking a diagonal house wall, but also scouting with sheep like a god? And a villager for some reason. Where's this villager going? Okay, Red's looking for something. What is it, though? What? What is Red looking for? Is Red looking for the sheep? The sheep's over here, bro. Yeah, you, you forgot it in the north. Oh, the boar. The boar. <laughs> Red thinks the boar is all the way over here. I think Red's looking for the boar anyways. Did Red take the other boars? Oh, yeah. Red's definitely looking for the boar. And really looking thoroughly as well. Like, look at that scouting. 60% of the map scouted. Still can't find the boar. It might make sense to look here. It could easily be there. It might make sense to look here. But red doesn't really have a good gauge on how far away it typically spawns. So red just like, let's check everywhere. You know, that's not going to hurt. Even getting town watch now, which gives you more vision from your town. That does not give you more vision for your pe the people in your town, though. Can you imagine if the boar was actually back here? Like, <laughs> how bad would this map be? I'm sorry, buddy. There's still no boar. And at what point is red going to give up on it? Red really wants meat. Let's get some uh, T90 pigs in chat. I know pig for red. And oh my god! We have the diagonal house wall versus the straight house wall. And eventually, if you think about it, they may meet down here. Depending on the angle. We now have some palisades from red. That's cheating. But blue is going for the great house wall. And then also a market and a blacksmith here. Okay, so... Blue's logic is I need the buildings. Let's just keep it in some area that'll protect me. How's Red's journey going with the boar? Did Red give up? Looks like it. Wait, now we have two villagers here. What's that about? Um. Oh, this... Okay. Oh, oh wait, wait. So Red is walling, which is good. But where's this guy going? Don't tell me he sees a boar. <laughs> He, like, finds the enemy boar and starts taking it. Is this a sneak villager? Is he going to make a little side base next to Blue's base? That would be so cool. By the way, this is what I said to the devs. I said, like, my feedback was I understand if they want to make walling changes, but I think they should have just made walls a little more expensive, and they should not have made the map this freaking open. What the? We have a tower. 
and some walls. Okay, Red. Anyways, why is this is going up? Look what this is doing to the low elo players. They want to wall, but it's going to take the entire game. I think they just should have made walls a little expensive. They're floating plenty of wood, and then the bases would be a little bit more manageable. Also, Red, Champion and Tetris, fitting that mining camp in there neat and tidy. Not the most efficient that way, but also not the biggest deal. Hey, look, there's the sheep. <laughs> the scout and sheep, still scouting, looking for that boar. What I don't understand is how someone at 300 ELO has the speed to be able to do this. I don't understand how that sheep is still scouting. Okay, so this is like a delayed tower rush. And now we have a forward barracks from red. So I know it looks a little weird. And it's a little slow. But I feel like... Uh, I feel as though red's idea is if he tries to attack me, I'll be walled. But I'll be attacking him because I'm outside my walls. And we have another barracks on the other side. <laughs> so he's sandwiching the opponent with military buildings, but Blue doesn't even know it yet. Yeah. Blue hasn't even moved this scout in like 20 minutes, by the way. Actually, that's an exaggeration. <gasps> oh! Can you imagine if the deer lived for another second and flopped down here? Can Red... Red can see that. Yo, Red can see that, but Red doesn't know if Blue sees it. And Red doesn't even know that Blue's there because Red's probably looking at the sheep. Yep, yep, sheep's still scouting, people. Sheep's still scouting, don't you worry. Uh, Red really struggling for resources. And these villagers can't even afford a mining camp. These villagers can't even afford to refresh farms at this point. 22 vil castle, just so fragile. And okay. Now, sometimes villagers will come in at a slightly wow. different angle. It might change things. I don't know. Like, what happens is they'll collect in the same spot. So if they were going to stand there, they might all go to the same point and the one vil will path this way and then it would be visible. But for now, it's not. And we have a spearman in there. And yeah, R red has so much idle time. If I were a villager, I would want to be in red space. That's all I'm saying. Lots of sitting around, enjoying the sun, and doing nothing. Thank you. Meanwhile, you're basically a slave in blue space. You got to do things all the time. Only one minute and 23 seconds. No rest. Also, this is a weird graphic bug. These farms are actually working. And that's in the game. That's not Capture Age's fault. That's a, that's a thanks to E thing. So I don't... That bothers me. I, just in case you didn't know... Okay, so Blue is on the way to Castleage, getting the stone mining upgrade in the other mining camp, and is now going to go to stone. And the other gold's back here, so it's like he's saving the main gold for later. Red is making a spearman from this side, and two spearmen from this side. So it's like a one-two punch. You hit him with the jab, boom, uppercut, two militia, two spearmen, other side. And Red is also trying to... <laughs> Red is also trying to wall. <laughs> like, a, is there... Is this ever going to be completed? This is such a long wall. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's with Palisades, too. Oh, God. I love it so much. And now we have a siege workshop. This is... You can't... Camping siege behind an unfinished wall is really not a thing. But maybe we're not there yet. You know, maybe he's thinking ahead. Oh my god. Blue has spotted Red's little... whatchamacallit to find that Red has walled in the tower. Inside the tower are two spearmen, but Blue doesn't know that. And there's a militia guarding the base of it. Like, this guy is basically... He's the, he's the scout for this whole little uh, encampment. And the idea is, if Blue ever attacks this tower, you don't know how much is in there, Blue. It's scary. He's the watchman. He's the bouncer. Yeah, he's the bouncer. He looks like a bouncer. If anyone was going to be the bouncer, it would be the militia. Is that auto scout from Blue? I feel like that's manual scouting from Blue. Blue's got to be like, what? 
Now, Red's got an outpost. Meanwhile, Red is researching arson. And speaking of wasting resources, right after that, we're going to see supplies. Now, the reason I speak about these texts with such disdain is because they look really cool. So good job from the devs to make them look really cool. The arson one has a flame on it. You're like, what? I'm gonna burn them down, yeah. And then this one has apples. And you're like, well, mom said apples are very nutritious. I don't really eat apples myself. But mom said that was good. And that it would keep the doctor away for a day or something like that. And so, anyways, you click those texts. They're actually really expensive. And Red hasn't benefited from it at all. Supplies makes militia cheaper. And then arson means your infantry destroys buildings faster. But these are feudal age units. So it's actually really expensive to do that. Many more 10 months with you at T90 official. Meanwhile, Red is making sure that the defenses are going up. And we have Red with the Great Wall of Vietnam. And even double checking the sides, which that was unnecessary, but eventually these walls will complete. And Blue is so terrified of the arson supplies tower wall in barracks forward. That's what we call it. That Blue has decided to stonewall. But Blue also, like Red, is kind of just like, yeah, you know what? I'm not in that big of a rush. We don't have to worry that much. So why don't we just chill out and have one villager do it? We're scared, but we're not that scared. Whatever. We'll blame it on her if it, if it doesn't work out. So Blue knows about the side base. Does not know about this side base. And Red is making a knight. I don't know if I should be on Team Blue or Team Red right now, honestly. Like, Blue is clearly the better player with economy. He actually got eco upgrades. But, I mean, if Red times this right... Remember, Red's 150 elo below. Red could do some real work. Blue does have loom, by the way, so it would take a few hits to kill the Vils. Red is just going to make everything. Like, Red doesn't know what the units do. Red didn't even know what the barracks text, what the barrack text did, but he's just going to click them. Hey, Red, if you win or lose this game, okay, if you end up watching this, there are 1,400 ELO players that will not get the upgrades you get at this time. There are players who will not spend their resources at 1,600 ELO. At least, as a positive, you spend your resources. You might not bring in a lot, but you spend it. Red, Red basically plays Age of Empires like he was going to be gone tomorrow. You know, that whole, like, YOLO, which is, you know, probably bad logic. Like, you don't want to spend all your money right when you get it. You probably want to save a little bit, but Red's like, nope. YOLO, bro. I love your post smile. Oh, man. The problem is now Blue has a second town center. Where did Red's knight go? Okay, that's a sheep. That's a knight. What? Guys, the sheep is still scouting! 30 minutes sheep scouting! Hold on, I need to see if he sets waypoints for this thing. Like, oh my god, he's actually setting waypoints! 30 minutes in! Sorry, I had to get into the game to see the waypoints. I can tell you, I have never set waypoints with sheep past 30 minutes. And I can't say for a fact about some of the pros out there, but I could tell you that probably most have not. Okay, here comes the big attack. The attack we've all been waiting for. Arson and supplies do nothing here. Berber villagers do move faster, but will Blue have the reaction time? Will Boo freak out? 31 minutes into the game, getting attacked by Spearman. Oh no, Red is here for blood. And the Spearman die very easily to the town center. Maybe attack the town center to make sure arson's worth it? Nope, okay. Oh, but it's that was the distraction. That was not even the real fight. That was a throwaway army. This, my friends, this is the real fight. And Blue suddenly is like, what? What do I do? How do I take wood? Oh, my God. And everything's idle. Blue's like, uh, uh, T90 told me uh, uh, if I play online, uh, uh, I'm going to find someone on my elo. And I just keep getting stomped. These people are so aggressive. Let's do it. A gather point from this TC was set to the gold. This villager goes over here. Good job from Blue, honestly. And all he really needs now is a castle on one of these sides to kind of stop this from getting out of control. Okay, Red's got to be careful about the town center fire, which 
I guess is the case, but my issue is if Red's paying attention to this army, this area is completely forgotten. A ram? Oh my god, he's made a scorpion and he's made a ram now. And more archers. He is all in. And blue is now going to make a castle there. If that castle goes up, I'm fairly certain this game is over. I think. Yeah, it has to be, right? Here comes the scout. One villager's down. Red now sees the castles going up. The scout goes down. If there was a Maganel, there's a chance. But without... With that many villagers, without a Maganel, with these being castle age units that are... Well, sorry, let me rephrase that. He's in feudal age with only... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that again. He's in castle age with only feudal age units, with the exception of the siege. Now Blue's like, well, damn. We really need to make our units stronger now. The enemy has a castle, so what are we going to do? Thumb ring. We're going to spend 300 food, 250 wood to get thumb ring... Which means we're just a little bit more accurate with these... Uh, how many units does he have? Uh, like, nine units. Which is so utterly expensive for this economy. And now Red... <laughs> I love Red so much. Red goes, we also need more siege. So Red adds the third siege workshop. <laughs> Okay, Red, I have a suggestion for you, buddy. Play Empire Wars. Red really likes to fight, but Red cannot macro at all. <laughs> loves to make stuff. Loves to get techs. There's three workshops in the south, and there's also one at home. But we've seen two siege units. The math does not add up. What about the sheep? Oh, that's... that's <laughs> I thought it was going to be a sheep. Because why else would there be anything but a sheep moving over here? But no, it's a villager, and I don't know why. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand why there's a villager here. I don't know where he came from. I imagine he came... I don't know where he came from. I really don't understand this. Because there's this villager. So I don't know if that's like this, this villager's younger brother. They're meeting up or whatever, but... Oh my god. Oh, Blue stole the sheep. Oh, and he's not moving it. He's really... He's sending a message. That's what it is. Okay, Blue has the sheep. Sheep's not happy. Blue is making militia. Which is a concerning counter. At the same time... It's not like Red has that many archers. And Blue has 52 vills. So even though the militia are being thrown away, per se, Blue has a much stronger economy, so he's just bringing in more resources. He just is more skilled in that regard. And I, there's no world where this castle ever gets rammed down, surely. Like, that... Taking out a castle, which is between two TCs, is, is so tough. I think you need seven or eight rams. This knight never really did anything. It's funny how he attacked with the spearman, but not the knight. So the knight might be a protector of some sorts. Now Red's now going to repair the ram. Can we talk about how much Red has on the map? Red is my new favorite player, by the way. Red has a little bit of everything. Just like an AI would. Red is my new favorite player. I want to be Red when I grow up. Okay, so now we have another castle from Blue, and this is a good move. He's terrified. He doesn't know what to do. Red's extremely aggressive. So he's just going to drop another castle. Camel archers are going to go down to this, but now Red is out of position here. He, he wanted to surround the... Uh, he wanted to hit Blue on this side, and now Red's going to have to run away from this. Good awareness from Red. But to be honest, Red isn't really even looking at home most of the time, so... In fact, should we look at the eco APM for red real quick? Let's look at this after this fight ensues. I think blue has forgotten about these units. Yeah, the camel archers have been forgotten. Those units are going to die. So it is worth mentioning that he has a lot of villagers forward, so that might be figured into the eco APM. But let's look at their speed. Okay, military APM is double. So more effective actions per minute with military and then a little bit less with eco. But yeah, I think it's just because of the forward vills. The forward vills count as eco. And now... <laughs> Red is going to make 
three siege workshops on this side too? Dude, you need more than two on gold, buddy. Create more vills and send them to gold. You cannot afford to even produce out of these, these buildings. Now we're going to have more bears. <laughs> okay. This guy has more military buildings at 42 minutes with 29 villagers than I would probably have in a normal game right now. This is crazy. I love it. And if I, I, I want for red so badly to win this game. I just do not see how that's ever possible. Guys, blue is out of wood. <gasps> blue is out of wood. I didn't think about that. Where does blue go for wood? And blue also must be extremely stressed. Okay, so here goes blue. Now, is this where the knight comes into play? Okay, they're heading towards the sheep. The sheep was their scout. We all know that. Red can hopefully see the villagers running. We see Tom. Tom and Jerry are heading this way. They're like, wait a second. What is that? Where are they going? The scorpion's waiting. Oh my god, he has them completely surrounded. There's the scout. There's the scorpion. And now he's going to make another stable. And the knight's on the move. And there go the villagers for wood. And if, if blue isn't smart about this, blue could lose all the villagers. But that will probably tell Red that, hey, that guy's escaped. He's going somewhere else. Berber villagers being faster now. Really helpful. And I think Red with the scorpion is going to end up attacking the pike. And clearing it. And oh my god! What is... Is he going to win this game? Guys, that's 20 vills. That's the vill difference right there. Actually, 20 vills can take out the knight, though. <laughs> 20 vills could easily take out the knight. Charge! <laughs> We have another pikeman. The villagers are fighting back. Okay, and now we see red. I think red might work some of his units from over here around there, but I could be wrong. Oh, wait, red's got his own spears. He's like, how do you like to be poked? I'll poke you. Is he making scouts too? An elephant and two scouts. So let's think back to what has been created in this game so far by red. Skirmisher, Archer, Elephant, Knight, Scout, Militia, Scorpion, Ram, Spearman. The only thing we really haven't seen is a Maganel. And then the unique unit, the Rats and Archer. And now there's this villager. I don't know what she's up to, but it's probably a Siege Workshop. Blue gets a TC up. Blue also clicks up to Imp. Interesting. And that's just an Archer range now. Red is... <laughs> Red is now going to make another wall to separate the two cities. He realizes that if they're separated from each other, they won't be able to reinforce. So here goes this villager to block this off. This is amazing. This is amazing. My new favorite player. Nantic is a beast. And the elephants are underneath the TC right now. Wow. Okay. There's, but unfortunately, no armor upgrades. Oh, wait. There is one. That helps. Honestly, guys, if this army was here right now, red would have maybe won the game. But then I guess blue would be over here. So, I don't know. Blue's camel archers, though, especially if blue gets any upgrades, are such a good unit here. The thing is about camel archers is that they have seven base attacks. So, when players forget upgrades, it's actually one of the best units to make. And here's Siege Workshop number... I've lost count. 18, maybe? There's been a lot of Siege Workshops for red. So Red thinks, I've got this all under control. I know exactly where the enemy's at. But Red's economy is so bad. Look at the difference. It's horrible. But <laughs> so much aggro. So much aggro. Okay, we now have a range. We have a barracks. And we'll have another barracks. And we'll have the siege here. Let's do it. Okay, blue is going to be in the Imperial Age. Now, we know that blue is aware you can produce things out of the castle. So I assume that's going to be for Trebs. And then we also know blue knows the blacksmith exists because we see upgrades coming in now. Mainly the armor upgrades. Now, I'd prefer to see the attack upgrades for archers, but armor is still something. And I now think our buddy red is dead. As much as I would love to root for red to somehow do this... Unless these rams come in and take out these castles. I think red's master plan is just not going to work. 
Blue's army's too strong. Blue's eco's too good. Blue's great escape was just enough. And now I want to know what red does. Because red is a very offensive player. But if there's no offense to be found, will red give it up? Guys, we've had more siege workshops from red than siege units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven siege workshops. And I think we only saw like four siege units. Maybe five. Uh, Archer range is going to end up going down to camels. Red's attempt to, yeah, to block off the two getting... cities from each other is not going to work. These buildings are slowly going to go down. Red not really panicking there, though. What is Red doing? Red is um, making pikemen. Oh, making a pikeman here. We know that's not going to work. So Red... The, the problem for Red is there's so much aggression, but so little eco. So if you're going to go for a YOLO attack, guys, pick one unit and upgrade it to the max. Oh, my goodness. It's been a while, huh, Red, since you've looked at your base? Okay, we're going to have a monastery, and we're going to have a university. Are you going to try an imp now? Is he going to try and go imperial age? Well, that's pretty tough. Okay. But yeah, if you're going to sneak army, go for archers or go for scouts and just get a lot of upgrades. If you make one of every unit, it's going to be so much less effective. And it's not going to benefit from your upgrades as much. Has Red found the boar yet? I don't think so. Now, the boar, the boar was the first chapter of this story. The trebs for blue were perfect. Red will start to lose everything. I think Red has definitely lost this game. But guys, I was supposed to do some adult stuff tonight. I think when I go off stream, I might have a few beers and I might just watch Red's recorded games. <laughs> it was either that adult stuff or watch TV with the girlfriend. And I can tell you that none of those things seem as interesting. <laughs> Is watching this guy's recorded games. I mean, I need to see more. We'll see. I am tempted to honestly do it on stream right now. But Blue's playing, or Red's playing this live. So if we get really lucky and Red has more time, maybe we see another game live. Scrub Gamer says, I think this is a 10 year old. That's rather ironic when your name is Scrub Gamer. But then I suppose you would be the person to judge the lack of skill that someone would have if your name is Scrub Gamer. So I take it back. I take it back. I think you guys underestimate the amount of adults that just do not care to be good at video games. Especially with an RTS, because I feel like people who are dedicated to an RTS put some level of work into it. Most people do not want to put work into getting better at a video game. They just want it to be fun and relaxing. Now the thing is... You play online enough, you have some level of dedication. I, Red has clearly played enough to drop down to 300 elo. Guys, when I said adult stuff, I meant like paperwork and phone calls and emails. I Never mind. Not worth explaining. Great job from Red to clear up the buildings. Uh, great job from Red to expand when the going got rough. At this point... Uh, why did I say Red? I meant to say Blue. At this point, Blue seems to be a little hesitant and scared of leaving home. Has, has really enjoyed the time spent in Mom's basement, but Mom's basement doesn't have any more resources anymore. You're too old, son. Time to move out. Okay, here they come. But I mean, you know, this army is just devastating. The tower was trebbed down. Now these units can't even attack because they're behind the walls. Ooh, we have a monk from Red. Well, we had a monk from Red. I just... Even though Red's gonna get smashed here, I just love the thought process. It's so overkill, but it's amazing. Because how frequently do you see a low elo player have aggression in mind? Normally, it's not aggression. Normally, it's SimCity. This guy doesn't care about SimCity. This guy cares about surrounding the enemy. Very inefficiently. But surrounding the enemy. <laughs> Red's like, if we don't if we don't move too suddenly, 
Blue will not realize what we're doing. <laughs> Red's still sticking to the game plan. To wall that. 42 pop. It's 100 some pop for Blue. Blue did place this town center, but I don't know who's going to build it. Um, but anyways, it feels like it's not really important right now. I don't even know what Red's plan is. Okay, Red also doesn't seem to know units too well. Which is, I think, why Red makes a little bit of everything. Because we have an elephant, now we have light cav, and then a scout. And then inside of the ram is a crossbow and skirms. Oh, these were the rams that were down here. Okay, I think Red is going to try and attack Blue's town center over here. Thinking that he's, keep, he's keeping Blue in the corner down here in the south. And that if he kills Blue here, there's a chance. But unfortunately, Blue has an army there. And I think it's very easy for Blue to just steamroll Red. So it's actually, for, for this ELO, not having a lot of game sense, it's actually a really good plan before resigning is to try and take this out. Because you know there wasn't much there before. But Blue had created units, sent it over there, and then is going to keep it there. Hey, by the way, we have Heated Shot. I'm going to eventually make a video of the most baity technologies for noobs in Age of Empires 2. Heated Shot, I think, is going to be at the top. Maybe maybe even in front of Supplies. Because at least Supplies gets utilized. Um, but yeah, guys, if you don't know, Heated Shot increases the damage your towers and castles do against ships. And this map has no water. Now, when I was growing up, I thought Heated Shot was like chemistry. Because Heated Shot looks like it's going to make your projectiles light a flame, right? Like it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to make your arrows fiery. But that's not what it does. <laughs> or it's going to make your shots more heated, which I guess is the same thing. So I can understand why it's deceiving. I guess when you've got Blue's resources, you just click whatever, right? Uh, hello, T90. How long have you been catting? Well, let's see. I've had a cat ever since we were... I've had a... I've been catting my whole life, actually. Growing up, we always had a cat in the house. Now, as an adult, we have cats, so... I'm pretty sure you meant to say casting. I'm just being a moron intentionally. Oh, God, Red. The one wall villager is gonna drop a castle right here. Oh, my God. Um, uh, buddy. Buddy. Uh, okay, well, perhaps as expected, that didn't work out too well. The stone's down the drain. I've been casting since 2015, to answer the question. Do you guys think Red knows you can delete stuff? Because I've spoken to 800 ELO viewers who said they didn't realize you could delete stuff in this game for a very long time. I think what Red wants to do is Red wants to make it over here. The red hasn't moved out yet, which makes me think that red doesn't know you can delete things. Now we have another Siege Workshop and Maganels now for red. So, and, and even another TC for red. He's booming. Unfortunately, blue. Decent upgrades, solid numbers. To be fair, blue also made a pretty big mix of units here. Um... And the elephants are doing an okay job because these camel archers don't have any attack upgrades, but... Like mentioned before, I think the base attack is still really strong. How would you feel about Heated Shot working versus Siege units? I don't think Heated Shot needs to be changed, honestly. I don't think Heated Shot needs to be changed. It's just one of those things. It's pretty funny. But it's just one of those things. Blue's getting some relics now. Blue's going to get relic number two. Blue's even thinking about attacking red. I think what happened is red clicked his siege this way to go after the town center. But because there's no hole, the rams now have to come all the way around. And yes, finally red gives it up. GG. Please, if you have it, salute red though. Because red is such a brilliant player that was so fun to watch. It was so precious. The little tower walled in with military units, the forward barracks, the disproportionate amount of siege workshops and whatever building Red wanted. That was crazy. But unfortunately for Red, too many resources put into the buildings. Too few units came out of the buildings. And then uh, 
that ended up meaning that the lack of eco for red wasn't worth it. There are instances where you can have 20 less villagers if you have the military to kill them, but it was just a bunch of feudal units. So really, the only thing red gained from Castle Age was a few light cav, a few elephants, and a few siege units. So crazy. All right. Uh, anyways, blue played well. Blue was the higher elo player. Blue was 430 elo, but I think that game makes me interested in seeing what happens when red is playing against people at 300 elo. Because in some way, shape, or form, their eco has got to be a little worse than blues, and maybe people panic more. So um, there's a look at the timeline. <laughs> what was the idle TC time for red in that game? Actually, it was pretty high for blue as well. It's really deceiving at this time because because they've stopped creating bills for a while. So not even worth looking at. <laughs> yeah, there's the overall uh, villagers max, villagers current, and there's the APM. Blue was speeding near the end there. Oh my god, he's playing another one? No way. You better not be teasing me. If you're teasing me, you're banned. I'm sorry, but you are. <laughs> 